I'm Lucy from Vicax and I'm here today with my top five awesome female friendships in fiction. Last week I read A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf and this is a book or an essay that she has written which is all about um, women in fiction and I'll do a wrap up of it as part of my 20th century classics wrap up which is coming next week but it got me thinking because one of the main things that um, Wolf talks about is how up until the point in history where she was writing so I think it was the 1920s almost all the fiction that had been written was written by men and as a result, most of the portrayals of women were about how women related to men. So they were always sort of, um, yeah, proxies of men rather than people in themselves. And she also noted that in the rare occasions when women were interacting with other women, outside of sort of situations where those women were related and they were family, there was almost no instances where the women were genuine friends. All the depictations were of um, women who were jealous of each other and who were competitive and combative even. And she said, you know, this just isn't the female experience. This isn't what women are like. Now, obviously we are a century later nearly and women write so many more books than they used to and I was interested to see about whether the way that women were portrayed had changed because obviously um, with women writing so many more of the books they're bound to be telling different stories and I thought there must be absolutely loads of books where there are really really strong female friendships at their heart. But when I started to look around, actually, I still found it a little bit hard to find them. I managed to dig up a few from my shelves, but I did think it was interesting that a lot of the relationships still turned sour at some point and there were still elements of, you know, competition and jealousy. However, I think I have managed to find five brilliant, supportive, genuine female friendships and so I'm going to run you through them now. At number five I have chosen Beaches by Iris Rayner Dart which you may have seen made into a film starring Meryl Streep and Bette Midler but this is a story about a lifelong friendship. Cece Bloom is the spunky energetic 10 year old who has big dreams of being a Hollywood star and Bertie White is the much more timid seven-year-old from Pittsburgh rather than the Bronx who really only dreams of being a mother and having a family and they meet by chance in Atlantic City and promise to stay in touch and over the years they, they keep writing to each other and they form a friendship first as you know children being pen pals but then they meet you know, at frequent intervals, always by the ocean, hence the title Beaches, and their friendship develops into this genuine lifelong bond that manages to weather, you know, all the love affairs and the jealousy and, you know, life's bitter disappointments and missed opportunities and perceived betrayals too, to just be this fabulously energetic and warm and funny relationship that will definitely have you reaching for the tissues. At number four, I have chosen Girls of Riyadh by Raja Alsania. And this is an expose story really about the lives and loves of four really privileged 20 something women living in Riyadh. And it is often described as sort of the Saudi version of Sex in the City, where designer handbags and nose jobs are coveted like diamonds, but where interactions with the opposite sex are much harder to engineer. And when it was published in 2005, it was actually banned 
by the Saudi Arabian government. So of course it then went on to become an international bestseller. But actually it gives politics a pretty wide berth and instead focuses on um, really how the women of Saudi Arabia fall madly and swiftly in and out of love, um, just like women do anywhere in the world. It's written as a series of emails between the women and it's a really sharp-tongued and sassy story about love and lust and friendship and hypocrisy really in a society where repression breeds desire rather than suppresses it. At number three I have chosen The Girls of Slender Means by Muriel Sparks and this was first published in the 1960s and it's a really small novel, it's small enough to be read in one sitting almost really, but it's one that really stands the test of time. It follows a group of young women in post-war London who are living together sort of in a hostel almost for um, single women and they're working as clerks and secretaries and you know they're squabbling over dresses and suitors and they're just trying to pretend really that the war never happened. And because it's Muriel Sparks it has this fantastic wit running through it but the darkness of her subject matter is never really far away. The girls are all you know energetic and frivolous and fearless and bewildered in a way that you know only youth can can offer really but they are all dealing with secrets and tragedies that are much greater than their years and ultimately this is a book really about the end of innocence I think and how you know when you learn so much more about the world and about yourself really the value of friendships and the dynamics of friendships change. At number two I've chosen The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. Now in 1949 four Chinese women who are really recent immigrants to San Francisco start this Joy Luck Club to eat dim sum and play mahjong. But over the 40 years that follows this club becomes so much more than a place to just, you know, giggle and gossip. These women are still outsiders in America. They are clinging to, you know, fading memories of their homeland and they're desperately searching for a new cultural identity. The novel actually is really clever in the way that it imitates um, the structure of a game of mahjong with 16 interlinking chapters and each one sort of reveals part of you know the women's tragedies and their histories and also their current relationships with their daughters who are you know essentially American and fully westernized and they've got this terrible conflict that pulls them between you know the past and the present. It is a novel that's written you know with so much empathy to its characters and it's one really about how friends can work together to overcome enormous changes in life and really lift each other up. Now before I reveal my favourite book with an awesome female friendship if you have enjoyed this rundown please do hit that subscribe button because we have loads more rundowns and similar bookish content on our channel. Now at number one I have chosen a book which is a real personal favourite and has the most amazing female friendship at its heart. It is A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Husseini. Now this book centres around the relationship between Mariam and Layla who really shouldn't actually be friends because they are both married to the same man. Mariam is 20 years Layla's senior and she is really bitter in her childlessness and you know has been broken down over decades of real abuse, of physical and emotional abuse from the vile Rashid. And when Layla comes in, she is, you know, comparatively very privileged because she's young and she's beautiful and she's fertile and these women should hate each other. And initially, 
They pretty much do. It's a confrontational relationship. But over time, it evolves into this fabulously warm and protective, um, fiercely protective relationship, really, as they both, you know, have so many shared fears and decimated aspirations. And as they sort of face their captor, really, together, it is ultimately a friendship that, you know, saves their lives. And this book is just beautifully written, um, beautifully and brutally written, but it's a story, I think, about the heroism that friendship can inspire. So that is why I chose it as my top book on female friendship. Um, I know that there must be loads more out there. They cannot be as few and far between as I um, seemed to be able to find them. So if you've got some up your sleeve that you'd love, I really would like to hear them. So please do talk to me in the comments below about um, your favourite books and also what you think of these books because it would be great, um, great to chat. In the meantime, yep, yeah, subscribe to our channel, um, look out for more bookish content and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.